Parliament. Uh, we will now move to the urgency motion. The Senate will consider a proposal from Senator Dean Smith, which has also been circulated and is shown on the dynamic red. Is this proposal supported? Thank you. Uh, with the concurrence of the Senate, the clerks will set the clock in line with the informal arrangements made by the whips. Um, Senator Brockman, can I ask you to move the motion before you get started? The motion. It's my pleasure to speak to this motion, in fact, um, proposed by my friend and colleague Senator Smith, fellow Senator for Western Australia. And it's not surprising that Senator Smith moves this motion, not just because it's in his portfolio area of responsibility, but it's also because my home state of Western Australia is just so heavily dependent on the airline industry. Western Australia is, and we, we, we thank goodness for this on a regular basis, Western Australia is a long way from anywhere. It's certainly a long way from Canberra, and we, we remember that every time we fly across the Nullarbor, um, but it's also the long way from anywhere uh, we travel internationally. Uh, Airlines, both for internal West Australian travel, for travel throughout Australia and for travel internationally, are so, so essential for Western Australians to achieve uh, their personal lives, to achieve their business responsibilities, to, for Western Australia to take its rightful place as an economic driver of this country. The airline industry plays such an important part, and competition within that industry is vitally important. Vitally important, and ensuring that we uh, ensure that competition is maintained and improved uh, is vitally important for my home state of Western Australia. And Senator Smith rightly raises the the, the ACCC report into. Uh, the airline industry, uh, uh, looking at what has happened, particularly post-pandemic, uh, in terms of moving back to a point where competition is putting those downward pressure on prices uh, that we all want to see for the flying public. Uh, but the evidence in that report, and I know Senator Smith will go into this in a lot more detail, but the evidence in that report is, is shows that whilst recovery is underway, um, the airline industry is yet is yet to return to the position it was in in terms of com competitive frameworks pre-pandemic. And I'll read you just just the start of this report. More than a year since the end of the final COVID-19 state border restrictions, the domestic airline industry has not yet managed to recover to pre-pandemic levels of passengers and capacity. So I ask you out there, those listening to this debate, to think about that. The report clearly states that the airline industry has not yet fully recovered. Uh, international market, which has also obviously been in the, in the media quite a bit over the last week, uh, particularly the government's decision to knock back additional flights from Qatar Airlines. And what does it have to say, uh, the, the ACCC report, about the international market? It said, while the industry has increased international capacity over the past few months, capacity remains below pre-pandemic levels due in part to delays in aircraft and spare parts shortages. Qantas has also reported that demand for international travel remains strong leading to a mismatch between demand and supply. This imbalance is putting upward pressure on international airfares. And every, anyone who's looked, anyone who's considered going and visiting relatives or, or taking a business flight to one of our major trading partners uh, would know this to be the case. Uh, in, in fact, it's something like 51 per cent above 2019 levels, 51 per cent increase. In, in, from between 2019 uh, and a few months ago. I mean, that is an extraordinary increase over a short period of time and reflects a market that requires the examination of government. These, these, this is a market that has a single dominant player in Australia, and I don't want to get into the politics of that, but it does have a single dominant player in Australia a number of smaller players, a number of smaller players who are trying to add competition to the market. 
And then we have an international regime where, again, you know, there, there are limited opportunities for people to shop around. So we have a competitive framework that is not ideal. Uh, as, as Senator Smith's motion clearly states, the ACCC's role in monitoring the airline industry is an important one and one that should continue. And it, does, it is passingly strange in a, in a week when we've seen the government knock back more flights from Qatar why they are refusing to reinstitute this. Senator Ayres. I, um, you know, there's something new every week in this joint. Um, in addition to uh, that extraordinary explosion we just heard over here, <laughs> there's, there's something new every week. And, and this, this newfound interest from the coalition in competition policy is, is extraordinary, really. And it may, it may be that there's a bit of freelancing going on as they jostle with each other. Um, the, the, the failure of the coalition to appoint uh, a replacement for Mr Roberts has obviously left a yawning gap uh, in their economic capability, a sort of Stuart Roberts-sized hole uh, in their economic capability, and people are freelancing and searching for it. I heard, I heard in question time Senator Brockman talking about talking about, uh, it was a very long bow, uh, passenger movements into Perth uh, and live sheep exports. There was a sort of stream of consciousness connection of these ideas, as if, as if the application by Qatar um, was in relation to Perth. And there's obviously a bit of a misinformation thing going on in here in Western Australia. And I'm very confident that Senator Smith won't continue with it because he only ever tells the truth. Uh, because Qatar's application had nothing to do with Perth. The, the Qatari flag carrier had been seeking to add 21 flights or one extra service per day into Sydney, Melbourne and Brisbane. Not Perth. Not, not the carry on that we saw earlier as if this had any relationship to what was going on in Western Australia. And th then we find out that, that this is not the first time uh, that this application has been declined. A previous Minister for Transport had, in a similar set of negotiations and discussions, declined the application from Qatar uh, in support of its national flag carrier uh, for additional flights. Who was that transport minister? It was Mr McCormack who declined it on the basis of very similar national interest grounds uh, that have been outlined by the current minister for transport. So this confected carry-on over the course of this week as if what is proposed is a sort of free-for-all, that the coalition, if it were in government, would just agree to additional capacity going into Australian airports from any comer. I mean, that, is, that is not the case. It is not the case in terms of any sensible regulation of Australian airlines. Now, the truth is that the airline industry has been on life support around the world over the course of the last three or four years. Uh, thousands of jets furloughed in deserts all across the world. We only had to fly into Alice Springs over the course of 2019, 2020, 2021, 2022 to see hundreds and hundreds of big jets parked in the desert uh, as airlines were furloughed, millions of staff suspended all around the world, tens of thousands of Australians engaged in our airline sector uh, suspended, being supported by the Commonwealth Government. And it is true that Australians have been disappointed, disappointed by the way uh, that our national airline, privately owned, but our national airline uh, has uh, not met the mark 
and not met the expectations that customers would have of it, that its staff and unions would have of it, uh, and that indeed the Australian government should have had of it. And that has been the subject, as it should be, of enormous controversy. Uh, sorry, uh, just sorry, sorry, Minister. Um, Senator Smith. Uh, Mr. Board. Acting Deputy President, I'm just curious to know, even in the last 30 seconds, whether Senator Ayres is going to mention Australian Consumer and Competition Commission and the monitoring report. Senator Smith, there is no, there is no point of order. But good try, good try, <laughs> Senator Ayres. What it does is it demonstrates Senator Smith's active interest in all of these areas. He's He's, he's, he's actively engaged in it. None of these other characters, none of these other characters, are interested in anything but the rhetorical flourish and the opportunism. Um, don't ever get me started on the newfound interest in competition policy from over here. I'm, I'm, I'm constantly surprised, constantly surprised. But I don't have enough time to get engaged in that particular part of the oh, argument. Senator, your time has expired. Senator Cox. <laughs> Thank you, Acting Deputy President. I also rise to speak to this urgency motion put forward by the coalition. We all know what's at the core of this motion, the decision of the government to block Qatar Airways from expanding their operations in Australia. And this decision directly benefits Qantas, a company who just um, weeks ago posted about their biggest profit ever after being weeks away from bankruptcy in the pandemic and relying on the government to bail them out. A company who is facing seamlessly uh, endless complaints of delays, cancellations, poor service, anti-competitive measures, uh, poor worker conditions, and a company who was once known as the spirit of Australia is becoming known as the spirit of corporate greed. Following the pandemic, our domestic tourism industry was shattered. This was compounded by the 2019-2020 bushfires and major floods in just about every state. And we need to be supporting our domestic tourism industry. We need people to be exploring in their own backyards. And the reality is, um, because Australia is so large, we absolutely need air travel to do this. And I agree with Senator Brockman's um, previous comments. But it's also expensive, and in a cost of living crisis, people can't afford the high fares that we are currently seeing right now. And this is especially true for my home state of Western Australia. Um, one way that this could be addressed is through the A. Triple C's airline monitoring regime. Thank you to Senator Smith to protect uh, consumers and promote competition. Because what we are seeing from our national airline is not in the best interest of consumers, and it is inherently anti-competitive. So, thank you to Senator uh, Dean Smith for bringing this um, MPU today, and uh, the Greens support that. Thank you, Senator Cox. Senator Smith. Thank you, Mr Acting Deputy President. Well, um, those people who are looking at my face might sense a, sen uh, a bit of disappointment. This discussion this afternoon, but I thank Senator Cox for her, uh, for her contribution and Senator Brockman's contribution. I do. This was an opportunity to rise above all of the noise, all of the discussion that has dominated our media, dominated this place over the last few weeks and provide a concrete course of action to do two things, protect consumers and protect competition. And I thank Senator Cox for her remarks and I thank Senator Brockman for his remarks. How curious that in this time of the debate, this time of the day, we usually hear from two Labor senators, but they've only decided to put one Labor senator on this issue this afternoon. And to be fair, Senator Ayres is a credible spokesperson but he did not address the issue. Australians are right to ask, why has Prime Minister Albanese done nothing despite all of the noise on aviation issues, all of the noise and concrete evidence about abuse of consumers, abuse of competition? Why has the government not chosen to do one simple thing? And that simple act is to ask the ACCC to continue what the ACCC has been doing for the last three years and to continue in further reports on the state of competition. And the ACCC, the very last sentence in its twelfth report, invites the government, invites the government to continue with the monitoring regime. The ACCC says a further direction to the ACCC would provide continued transparency and scrutiny of the industry at a time when new and expanding airlines are still trying to establish themselves. 
I would like to, if the debate went longer, talk about Qantas, talk about Virgin, talk about Qatar, talk about Emirates, but that's actually not what's important. This is a tool that improves transparency for legislators, improves transparency for consumers and others that are interested. And it's no accident that the only people that are opposed to ex extending the ACCC monitoring regime are who? Are who? The airlines. Now, some airlines have a fair point about the administrative burden, but let's worry about that after the government takes a concrete step. Takes a concrete step. This is a simple and easy act and Prime Minister Albanese and the Competition Minister, Ms Delay, the member for Fenner, are silent. Are silent. So we have had all this news, all of this consume, concern. We've had consumers being ripped off. We've had cancellations. And the government is silent. This could be done overnight. This could be done in the next 30 minutes. Now, we don't know. We don't know if the Treasurer, Mr Chalmers, or if the Competition Minister, Mr Lee, has a proposal on their desk at the moment. But if they do, let's act it. Let's make it happen. Because it is such an easy thing to do to say to Australian consumers, we have heard your concern. And it is wrong to talk about airline competition in this country in terms of just holidays. People travel interstate, they travel inter intrastate, they travel internationally. They stay connected with their families in, times of, in good times but also in troubled times. And the diaspora of the Australian community, whether they're the Indians or others, deserve to be able to travel and reconnect and stay connected with their families at fair and reasonable prices. This is a simple thing to do. And next week, when Senator Mackenzie and myself bring a bill to the parliament to do what the government will not do, Senator Cox, I hope we can count on your support, not for politics but for consumers and for promoting competition. Senator, Senator Roberts, I hope we can count on your support because transparency is the thing that will keep Australian airlines honest. It will keep their chairman of, of their boards honest, it will keep the CEOs honest. And more importantly, if we are seeing some positive developments, Rex and Bonza and others, they deserve to be supported. And I dispute the comment in, I actually dispute one of the comments in the ACCC report. They say that there is a duopoly in the aviation industry. That is untrue. There is one very, very, very dominant market player, and they are called Qantas, and then there is another player called Virgin, but they are not equal. And when people talk about duopolies, the assumption is that they are equal. They are not equal. One operates with a market share up here. One operates with the market share here and the others are trying to get into the market. So we are on the cusp of something very, very exciting because the ACCC report says that things Senator are moving Smith, in the right direction. The government should act. Expired. Okay, uh, Senator Roberts. Thank you. As a servant to the many different people who make up our one Queensland community, I support Senator Smith's matter of urgency motion. The level of corporate cronyism and greed in Australia's airline industry is out of control. COVID was used to change the public's perception as to what constitutes fair and reasonable behaviour in the airline industry. Fares are up, services down and luggage, luggage is nowhere to be found. In one survey, Australian Airlines managed to lose baggage 10 per cent of the time. Qantas international fares are up 20 per cent in two years. International market share has doubled and profits have followed airfares up, now standing at $2.47 billion. Despite this, Qantas COVID cancellation credits expire on December the 30th. Virgin COVID credits expire on the same date. A mere coincidence? The ACCC recently charged Qantas with taking bookings on flights that were already cancelled. There's a reason for that. Our established airlines have a legacy allocation of airport landing and takeoff gates. In order to restrict competition that may bring down prices, Airlines schedule fake flights and sell tickets with no intention of operating that service. Informing customers at the last minute of the cancellation, despite knowing of the cancellation for days or weeks in advance. The airline does three things with this. Firstly, it keeps that slot out of the hands of a new competitor who may compete with them on price or service. Secondly, it allows airlines to squash passengers into flights that become very profitable. Domestic load in March 23 
was 85 per cent. Thirdly, passengers suffer. Everyday Australians miss connections and lose time away from loved ones. Travellers are left to reorganise holidays on the fly, usually costing them more and taking days off their holiday break. The predatory billionaires that own Qantas shares are perfectly happy with this. Billionaires using investment funds like BlackRock, Vanguard and First State in order to turn Qantas, or more accurately everyday Australians, into cash cows. As long as they can use restrictive trade practices like nobbling competitors, as they did with the recent Qatar Airlines decision, and as long as they can get away with hogging landing and departure slots, their dividends will grow. From where do these excess profits come? Everyday Australians, of course. Taxpayers contribute yet more. Qantas took $900 million in JobKeeper payments during COVID and, despite record profits, kept them. All of these things the ACCC should look at, not just pricing. The power of parasitic billionaires must be cancelled out through strong government and regulatory action to restore honest competition, ending crony capitalism through restoring free markets and real competition. Thank you, Senator Roberts. Senator Davey. Uh, thank you very much, Mr Acting Deputy President. Australians are currently paying more for airfares, reliability is going down, flight cancellations are up and are less frequent. Um, the fact of the matter is that we are now seeing higher airfares and less seats on international flights than before COVID. The Albanese government is failing Australian families and businesses by deliberately exempting Qantas, Virgin and the wider aviation sector from its recently announced review of competition policy. And the results of taking the ACCC eyes off areas as important as aviation can be seen by what we've seen from our national carrier in recent times. The sorry story of Qantas as it stands today should be a lesson to all corporate entities, but also a lesson as to why it's important to have ACCC monitoring. Their once widely respected reputation is currently pretty trash. First, it started um, with the refusal of Qantas to allow Qatar additional flights into Australia, allegedly at the blackballing of the Qantas CEO. Then we see Qantas standing on the moral high ground, handing out free seats to yes campaigners for the referendum, and meanwhile cancelling nearly every flight I've been booked on for the last couple of weeks. That should have been enough to make people think. Then they see the eye-watering bonus being handed to the departing CEO, who's actually still getting paid as much of a bonus even though he's brought forward his resignation. The poor incoming CEO, who probably thought she was getting the gold standard job, is now faced with having to rebuild trust as a priority. But the absolute icing on the cake in the saga of Qantas is the when the totally independent ACCC announced it was taking court action alleging Qantas had advertised and booked and taken money for flights that it already knew it had cancelled. That is what ACCC monitoring can highlight. That's what it can expose. The ACCC has alleged that for more than 8,000 flights scheduled to depart between May and July 2022, Qantas kept selling tickets on its website for up to 47 days after they'd already cancelled flights. People who booked on those flights know only too well the inconvenience and the frustration and the cost of doing business. Qantas treated its customers not as loyal and valued part of the Qantas family, but as disposable and dispensable ticket buyers. This is from a company whose brand was once 24 karat gold in the eyes of the world. And in all of this, the Prime Minister would appear to have been hoodwinked because he's never missed an opportunity to be seen in the company of the now departed Qantas CEO. And he has a fallen hook, line and sinker for the, the proposal by the aviation industry. Don't, we don't need to be monitored by the ACCC. We are all good corporate citizens. Well, Qantas hasn't been acting as a good corporate citizen in most recent days. 
as important as a business to Australia is, that Qantas is, and in the past it never shied away from competition, domestic or international, but it has become a corporate bully. Um, it should be willing to compete strongly and successfully with the best of international and domestic airlines. And I hope the new CEO rises to that challenge, and I hope the board, bruised and battered from handing out a $24 million golden handshake, might realise that they need to turn the tables. Australia does need Qantas. We need Virgin. We need others. We need competition. We need Rex. I need Rex because I fly regionally. But we need healthy competition, we need transparency and we need monitoring. And the best way to assure us that we are getting that is to, take, is to have the ACCC continue its scrutiny and monitoring of the industry as part of its competition roles and responsibilities. Thank you, Senator Davey. Senator Rennick. Thank you, Acting Deputy Chair. And I'm pleased to speak to, on this uh, urgency motion today because as an accountant who uh, measures uh, things all the time, I know that what gets measured gets improved and what gets watched uh, and is transparent improves performance. And yet here we have another example of the Albanese government failing to uphold the principles of transparency and accountability. Now, why on earth would you have a company like Qantas, which is a very large, you know, large market share, dominates the, the market here in Australia, why would you exempt them from ACCC monitoring? Why would you do that? And the question has to be asked, why has the Prime Minister? The Prime Minister could step in if he wanted to and make sure and hold Qantas accountable. And if any company needs to be held accountable at the moment, it is Qantas. I mean, we've got the, you know, so, many, so many abuses uh, of market share uh, and market privilege uh, recently by Qantas that it really needs to be called out on its intolerable behaviour. Not the least is that it has been taking bookings for flights that have already been cancelled. Now, that is just shocking. And then last week we found out that they had to reverse the decision that they weren't going to actually honour the $500 million in credits uh, as a result of the COVID crisis where people had to cancel their flights. Uh, and Qantas decided to put an arbitrary deadline that you had to take these, use your own credits, by I think it was the end of this year, or you're just going to lose them. Well, why should Qantas, who got bailed out by the taxpayer like many big corporations did, you know, yet again, the big end of town always milks uh, these uh, catastrophes or, or you know, so-called catastrophes for their own gain. I mean, I thought the point of democracy was to stand up for the little guy against the big guy, uh, but you know, not anymore, not anymore in this country. No, no, no. It's always the big guy that gets the free handouts. And the prime minister, what, why would the prime minister, who you know, used to stand up? I mean, I thought the Labor Party used to stand up for the little guy, the battlers. But it's not interested in that. Under, under, prime minister, under the Prime Minister, he is more interested in whining and dining with the big end of town than he is in protecting the little guys. You know, the little guy just wants to fly to another state to see his uh, you know, grandmother or, or, or grandfather or go to his mate's wedding. You know, why can't we have a you know, system whereby we get a fair go in this country for the people that want to travel? It's a big country. We need genuine competition. Uh, in airfares in this country, and we are not getting it. We are not getting it. And you know what? What is the relationship between the prime minister and the former CEO of, as of you know, five o'clock today, an hour ago, Alan Joyce? Why did Alan Joyce give the uh, prime minister's son access uh, to the captain's lounge, chairman's lounge? What was going on there? Uh, what was going on with the Emirates deal? Was that was that all done so that Qantas? Uh, would then give free flights to all these people that want to fly around the country with the voice? Is this something that we need to refer to ICAC? Is this something that we need to refer to ICAC, where the Prime Minister has actually done a deal with uh, Mr Joyce in order to influence the outcome of the referendum? That is a question that needs to be asked. 
But the other question we need to point out, or the other issue that we need to highlight, is the consistent pattern of failing to properly inform the Australian people and shine a light on the functions of the Albanese government. Because this isn't the only, only time that we have seen the Albanese government not want to come clean on how the country is being run. I know my uh, colleague here in the chamber, Senator Cadell, has tried to get an inquiry up into the transmission lines, the impact of transmission lines on the environment. We have asked for uh, details on aged care. We have asked for the minutes on national cabinet. I mean, Prime Minister Albanese said if he got into uh, government, he would release the minutes of national cabinet. Hasn't done that. Hasn't done that. He's also said uh, that he would also uh, lower electricity prices. Now, we want the Productivity Commission to report on electricity prices, to have a standard benchmarking. Did he support that? No. Another example of where he doesn't want to be transparent about the way this country is run. The other thing he said he'd have a, a, a Royal Commission into COVID. Does he, has he honoured that pledge? No. So it is another example of the Prime Minister not being fully transparent and accountable Senator to the Australian Reed, people. Your time has expired. Uh, now, the question is that uh, the motion moved by Senator Brockman be agreed to. Those that have been say aye. aye. Against no. The ayes have it. Ayes have it.